All right, take a look at this. A dual C809. It's a cassette deck. Retro tech. Beautiful unit. Oh my goodness, look at this thing. So the customer brought it in and said, lights out and cleaning. Let's go ahead and power the unit on. Sure enough, only one of the VU meters is working. He wants a cleaning. Let's go ahead and pop a tape into it. See if it actually plays. Well, that doesn't sound good. But I noticed when I first start playing it, it sounds really good. So it sounds like the azimuth is changing. So the tape is actually being drawn across the head at a different angle. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the cleanliness of the capstan and the pinch roller. I'll go ahead and turn the video light on, get it in there, and see if we can take a peek at it. Okay, so here is the capstan shaft and the pinch roller, and it's really nasty. The head doesn't look too terribly bad. Let's go ahead and hit it in the play position. Head doesn't look too bad. Over here's the erase head. Definitely needs a cleaning, but let's look at the pinch roller and the capstan. They are absolutely filthy. So let's go ahead and give it the cotton swab with the acetone treatment and see if we can deglaze that pinch roller and clean up the capstan shaft. So I'm just gonna put it in fast forward here. Oh, you can see how dirty that thing is. Absolutely filthy. Oh my goodness, it definitely needs a cleaning. Okay, so it's gonna be really hard to show this and film it at the same time, but I'm gonna try. So I've got a cotton swab right here, soaked with acetone. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to scrub the pinch roller. Try to get some of that glaze off of it. See how much it's pulled off already. So I'm scrubbing the capstan shaft and the pinch roller at the same time. See if it makes a difference. So that's round two. So I'll go ahead and wipe off the head and the erase head. Unfortunately, I did make contact with the back plastic, so it did leave a little uh, residue of acetone, but once it dries, it should clear up and it should be just fine. Well, let's go ahead and pop a tape back in it and see if it makes a difference. All right, ready to go. Let's go ahead and pop a tape into it. Definitely sounds much, much better. Look at the difference in the audio level. I don't know if I showed that before, but it definitely was not getting up that high. So I believe it was just the pinch roller mainly being glazed that was causing the problem. So let's go ahead and tear it apart and see if we can figure out how to replace that lamp. Maybe with an LED. I have a bunch of incandescents. I'll just put a new one in there. Probably going to be totally fine. All right, so I got the top off. Take a look at this thing. Gotta love retro tech. Look at that huge record play switch down there. There's the motor, the belt. This one has an idler for the take up. Right there, we'll go ahead and clean that. Maybe try to clean the belt, not sure. But look what I see over here. The lamp is actually working. It's just popped out. Where does this lamp go? There's a second lamp just laying loose down there. I don't get it. So let's go ahead and try to pop this one back in. Interesting, not quite as bright. So I'm quite perplexed 
Where does this third lamp go? It's soldered in parallel with the other two lamps. So was somebody working on this and they just gave up and it's like, I'm just gonna leave it laying loose in the cabinet? <laughs> I don't know, it's really strange. But if I shut the power off and you look at this lamp right here, it's really, really dark. It's got a lot of hours on it. If I pull this one out, it looks brand new. So if I hold the two side by side, I power the unit back up. You can see the one on the right is really dark compared to the one on the left. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and replace them both and just take that third lamp out of the circuit. I don't know where it goes. I can't find a place for it. Here's a wiring diagram on the dual 809. And these are the two terminals that the lamps are attached to. So on this terminal, it has two leads. So if I follow the first lead right here, it goes to this lamp. If I follow the second lead, it goes to this lamp. And the grounds, first lamp, second lamp. The third lead actually goes over to another circuit board. So let's look at the schematic. So here is the power supply schematic diagram. And look at this. I only see two lamps. There's not a third one in this unit, so I don't know what might be going on here. Very hard to say, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and throw a couple of brand new incandescent lamps in this thing because I have them in stock. They last years and years. I could put LEDs in here, but for the amount of use this thing's going to get, I think incandescents are going to be just fine. All right, so two brand new lamps, soldered, heat shrinked, ready to go. Well, I decided I'm just going to go ahead and throw a new belt on this unit because the old one is just stretched out too much. You can see the memory it has. So I went ahead and chose a PRB 9.2 inch belt, new old stock that I have. I'll throw that on, give it a go. So you can see the new belt is on the inside. The old belt has been sitting for quite some time in one location. The new belt is slightly thicker, but that's all I have to deal with. All right, new belt is installed. Let's go ahead and clean the idler pulleys right now. Just a cotton swab with some acetone. Just gonna deglaze them, bring them back to like new condition. Look at that, how much came off that idler? Let's go ahead and hit it a second time. Now we'll get the second one back in here. So this one is used in playback. This is for the take up clutch. So I'm actually stalling the take up reel table right now and I'm not seeing it slow down or stop. The small one is used in fast forward and rewind. You can see that I have the clutch stalled, but the idler is actually still moving. So that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe off the belt real quick. Kinda of hard to see all these wires are right in the way. I'll try to wipe off the flywheel at the same time. And I think we should be good. Let's go ahead and give it a try now. Make sure everything works just fine. So I noticed that the right channel meter, which I have torn apart, I went ahead and pulled the faceplate off, was actually sticking. It's not sticking terribly bad, but it was sticking slightly. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and soften this thread lock right here, this red glue that's on this. Now to do that, I take my screwdriver and I stick it in the acetone and I get just a droplet on the tip of it, just like that. And I drop it on the thread lock and I'm gonna let it soften the glue for a few seconds. 
Then you can see there's a screwdriver slot right here. That's the jeweled adjustment. Some of these have jewels, some of them don't. I just call it the jeweled adjustment. And I'm gonna go ahead and once it's soft, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a turn until it turns free. And then I'm gonna give it about an eighth of a turn farther, just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and bump the needle. That looks perfect. So now all I have to do is put the face back on the meter. It's actually just held in place with a little piece of tape. I just sliced it with a razor blade. There's a piece of tape across the top as well. There's nothing on the bottom, just tape on this side, this side, and across the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a new piece of tape across this. We'll put it back in the unit. Once the acetone evaporates, that thread lock is gonna be good once again. It's gonna hold that screw in place. And while I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot the record play switch with some deoxid. I doubt very much that this customer is gonna record tapes with it, but I just wanna go ahead and clean the switch nevertheless. So I just noticed the date on the motor, 18 May 78. Well, let's go ahead and put this thing back together and give it a test. Okay, well there it is, the dual C809 cassette deck. Repaired, ready to go back to the customer to live many more years, a happy life, hopefully. So just to recap, went ahead and cleaned the record play switch down here, even though I doubt the customer is ever going to record anything on it. Replace both meter lamps and remove that third lamp that went absolutely nowhere. Replace the capstan belt, cleaned and deglazed both of the idler pulleys, adjusted the right channel meter movement because it was getting stuck slightly, Clean the heads, clean the capstan shaft, and deglaze that pinch roller that was really, really bad. Let's go ahead and pop a tape into it. So I have a tape here that I recorded back in probably 1985-86, Stevie Nicks. Sounds great. Meters are moving absolutely perfectly. Anyhow, that's it. It's up and running the dual C809 cassette deck. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. While you're down there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me norcal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Once again, everyone have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.